Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you all about the nitrogen cycle and how to cycle your aquarium. Hi, welcome back to the channel. So, like I said, in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about the nitrogen cycle and giving you ways to help cycle the aquarium. Now, when you're new to fish keeping, it can all be quite daunting. A lot of people get really bad advice from fish stores that say, yeah, set your tank up, chuck some tap water in it, leave it for two days and come back and get fish. It's not that easy. Um, if you do do that, you may have success, but you could lose a few fish on the way and it's not advisable. So today I'm gonna to run you through a couple of ways that you can cycle your tank correctly without putting any fish's lives at risk and it means that you'll have a healthy aquarium that will be well established and you'll have more success in the future if you do it properly right from the beginning. So water quality is essential if you want healthy, good looking fish. And they often say in the fish keeping world, it's not really about looking after fish, it's about looking after water. Once you master the water chemistry, the hobby will be much more enjoyable for you as you'll have a lot less to worry about. A newly set up aquarium does not contain enough bacteria to complete the nitrogen cycle. Once given a source of ammonia, the beneficial bacteria will begin to multiply and colonise in the substrate, the filter and any porous materials you've got in the tank like rocks. The first thing you want to do when you add your water into the aquarium is you need to dechlorinate it. If you don't dechlorinate your tap water then no bacteria is going to grow because the chlorine in the tap water and all the other nasty chemicals will kill the bacteria. So first of all you need to do that. Things that you can use for that is things like Seachem Prime, um, lots of other things. I use one by Interpet. Um, there's loads, loads and loads of water de, what's it called? Dechlorinators. So use the one that you find best. Seachem Prime is sort of like up there with the one that people really recommend. I've never used it myself, but you can use that. I'm gonna pop up a slide now of the nitrogen cycle. Now, if you just look at this, you can see all the way around the circle that it shows you all the way through the nitrogen cycle from ammonia to nitrite to nitrate, where it all comes from, the proper names for it all. And you can pause the video here and just have a look at it, screenshot it. It's always good to have on hand and that way you have got it on your phone or however you've taken a picture of it and you can reference it back again. Okay, so like I say, first of all, you're going to need a source of ammonia. Now you can get this in a couple of ways. One, you can add fish food to the tank and then as that decomposes, it lets off the ammonia and that can start the cycle. Or two, you can buy ammonia in a bottle. So it's pure liquid ammonia. Um, usually about 10% is the one that you buy in the stores. Um, and you add that each day and that basically feeds the bacteria and keeps the cycle going. There is another way that you can cycle your aquarium, but we'll come back to that in a bit. So once you've added your dechlorinator, so by this point you'll have already needed to have worked out how many litres or gallons your tank is for the dechlorinator, but basically if you don't know how many litres or gallons your tank is, there's loads of calculators online, you can just pop in your measurements of your tank and that will come back and tell you exactly how many litres or gallons it contains. And then what you want to do is take your tank with your dechlorinated water and you want to go online, search for an ammonia calculator and what that will do is tell you for the amount of litres of water you have, um, how much ammonia you need to put in in millilitres to get it to 3 ppm. Now ppm stands for parts per million and that's basically just the level that ammonia is measured in uh, as a concentration with it diluted in the water. So once you've done your calculations, you want to add your first dose of ammonia. That is the correct amount for your tank. And then leave it till the next day, and then you want to start testing. So what I would recommend to test is the API Freshwater Master Test Kit. Um, I've done a separate video on this. I will pop it in the description so that you can click on that and go and watch it that explains in really simple terms how to use this test kit. Um, a lot of people have found it very useful, so if you don't know how to use this, go back first and look this up. Now, from the day after you've done your first dose of ammonia, you want to start testing. Just for the ammonia, now there's no point testing for anything else because it will not be present. So on this chart here that comes with your test kit, if you look on the ammonia, it goes up like this. So you want it 
um, between two and four, so you want it about three, three parts per million. Now, that's the reading that you want every single day, and that's why we have to dose with the ammonia. So, when you test it each day, you can put on the ammonia calculator online what your litres per tank are, what your current reading is, and it will tell you exactly how many millilitres of the liquid ammonia to put into your tank to bring it back to 3 ppm. And that way you're giving the tank a constant source of ammonia to feed the bacteria as it grows. You want to be doing that for about a week and after a week start testing for nitrite. And if you test for nitrite and there is nitrite present, then you know that the cycle has started in your aquarium. You want to be doing the test for the nitrite every other day and you should see it gradually start to rise and then it should start to fall. This can take several weeks. There's no specific set time for this, so it is all about the testing. So you just gotta test, test, test until we get to the end result. Then finally, when you test it and you've got ammonia levels of zero and nitrite levels of zero, and you're showing some nitrate levels, up to about 20, but you'll probably find they'll be quite high to begin with, up at about 40, um, then it's the cycle's complete and you are ready to add fish. So what you want to do then, if it is up to about 40, I'll show you one here. So you want your ammonia at zero, you want your nitrite at zero, and this is your nitrate. So you can get it up to about 40, but then you want to be doing a water change. So you want it sort of around this color. Um, and once you've done a water change, that'll remove the nitrate from the tank and you are ready to put fish in. Now remember, if you're not putting fish in the tank straight away, you will need to continue to dose the tank with ammonia every day to feed the beneficial bacteria because otherwise they will all die off and all of your cycling will have been for absolutely nothing. So make sure you do that, it's very important. Also take into consideration that the amount of bacteria that's in there has grown and colonized to cope with the amount of ammonia that you are feeding it every day. So you need to take into account that when you are adding fish, you don't want to add too many all at once. You want to add a few. Um, fish stores will give you some good advice on this, but mainly independent ones that you want to listen to, um, even though they can be a bit sketchy. Just don't add them too fast. Add a few, wait a couple of weeks or a week at least, and then add some more. And then basically your bacteria, as the levels of waste from your fish grow, raising the ammonia output, um, the bacteria will grow to be able to eat that and transform it into nitrite, then nitrate. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pop up a chart over the screen. Now, looking at this chart, you can see on here that we are dosing the ammonia and then on the chart it will show you that the levels will rise over a period of time then as the nitrite starts to come in that will join it too then they will both fade off to nothing and then you will have nitrate now once you get to the readings of nitrate and the zero on each of the others as you can see on the chart then you will know that you have completed the cycle now don't forget nitrate isn't overly bad for your aquarium and especially if you've got a planted aquarium it's really good for the plants to eat for fertilizer um, they will take some of it out but you will have to do water changes not only to give them fresh water but to also reduce the nitrate levels and that will basically keep you having a healthy tank because nitrates are dangerous in high quantities Another method that you can do is to add fish food to the aquarium each day. It will probably take a bit longer. It's not as controlled um, as you don't really know how much food you need to add to give off a certain amount of ammonia each day, but it is doable. Um, so don't panic if you don't want to do the ammonia thing. You can just pop a bit of fish food in there. When you see the ammonia levels fall below that 3 ppm, pop a bit more in until it raises it. Just don't put too much in because otherwise it'll have a massive spike. Um, and it will just slow everything down. Now, there is another method called the fish in method. I don't recommend this at all. Many fish keepers don't recommend this. Basically what it is, is you just set up the tank, chuck your fish in. Now, you're basically using the fish as the source of ammonia to build up the nitrates and things. But what's gonna happen is you are going to get a spike in ammonia because there's no bacteria there to turn it into nitrite and nitrate. Um, and your fish are gonna get ill. They're gonna get ill from the ammonia and they will probably die. People say, oh, well, I've done it with goldfish and I just buy cheap fish and it was fine, they were fine. They might seem fine and yes, it will probably work, but it's not very kind on the fish. You are basically torturing them to cycle your aquarium 
the easy way um, and it's actually not easier because you're gonna have to buy more fish you're going to have ammonia up and down all over the place and you're probably gonna end up with a really cloudy aquarium that's probably green and doesn't look very nice so I really wouldn't recommend doing it that way stay away from the fish in cycle if you are going to do it you do need something like sea chem prime to reduce the ammonia out of the water and things like that but I really wouldn't recommend it don't do it lastly the other way that you can cycle your aquarium is by using already cycled filter media now this is what I tend to do I cycled my first aquarium over there and then when I set up a new tank now I pinch some of the media from that put it in the new filter system and replace it with new in the original one just make sure that wherever you're taking it from you're not leaving it so there's not enough of the matured media to actually keep up with the tank that you're taking it from this tends to be fine if you're using it from one of your own tanks to another some people will get it from a fish store some fish stores will let you do that um, or some people if you ask on a local hobbyist page they will exchange you for some cycled media for some new media this can be a little bit dodgy because if they've got worms in their tank or parasites they could come across in that media and then before you've even set up your tank you've already got parasites in there so do that at your own risk i personally wouldn't do that but you can now when you are moving established filter media from one tank to another i've actually done that this week with this tank behind me um, i hadn't planned on setting this up yet and this will be my cichlid tank eventually but we've been having a white heron visit the pond. So this lovely little animal has basically gone to my pond. I thought I had enough coverage in the pond, clearly not. Um, it's eaten my original two goldfish that were probably about this big. Um, and there was 18 fry, which are now not fry because they're these. Um, and it's eaten all of them apart from seven so I've managed to rescue these guys I'll show you some footage of them now I've managed to rescue these ones um, they're doing really well in this tank obviously they're not going to stay in here what I'm going to do now the pond is empty of fish I'm going to take the pond down I'm going to make it deeper and wider and then in the spring when the temperatures have raised again I'll pop these fish back into the pond so yeah there's a few ways of how you can cycle your aquarium. It can be very confusing when you start off, but hopefully my videos made it a bit more simple for you. Um, just get a pen and paper when you start watching the video or watch it back again, write down a few tips and just follow them and you should have success. There's no reason why not, but you've just got to be patient unless you've got the filter media and you're starting off straight away. But like I said, with this, um, I did borrow media, so it was already established, but there wasn't enough media in there to cope with the goldfish so I did have a spike in ammonia I know that because I was testing the only way you know what's going on in your tank is if you test so I can't express that enough you need to test your water so I identified straight away the first day that the ammonia had gone high it wasn't overly high it was just up a tiny bit but that allowed me to then do a 50% water change and I've had no problems with it ever since I will test it again in a minute and if it has gone up again I will do another water change so it's just about keeping on top of it um, it's, it's not a lot of effort you just have to monitor it I've got my little book here I'll show you I was quite sad and I painted my own <clears throat> I write down all of my parameters in this book and that way you can look back and you can go right okay well this is when the ammonia was there, then the nitrite kicked in here, this on this day was this reading, blah, 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 blah. And you've got a track of it then. So just, just so you know, you don't have to do it, but I find it quite helpful. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video, guys. If you've liked what you've seen, then let me know in the comments. If you've got any questions or need to know anything, ask me and I will reply to you. Um, I did say in the past couple of videos that I'd set a goal to get 100 subscribers before Christmas, well, by Christmas day. And we've smashed that. I've now got 103 subscribers. So thank you so much to all of you guys. Um, it does mean a lot to me. Welcome to the family. Anybody watching now that hasn't subscribed, just click the button and join the family. We'd love to have you. Um, drop us a like if you've enjoyed the video and turn on the notification bell. A few people said they haven't been notified when my videos have gone up. What you need to do, you need to click the notification bell and click all. That way it won't just send you the occasional one. It will tell you every time I upload. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. I'll see you all next week. Have a great week. Bye.